I would like to introduce our special guest, Lester Cameron, and his wonderful guide dog. I'm very careful to say that, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. He will explain the difference between seeing eye dog and a guide dog. MJ, and MJ's full name is MJ Beetle Cameron. It's written on his birth certificate. Birth certificate. Oh, wow. So already, okay. He's not insulted by <laughs> no. calling him just MJ. Um, I met Lester when he was coming in for classes because we do a lot of work with the... Um, Saying I um, computers that what um, <laughs> that's was, an was, interesting concept. Seeing <laughs> I computers, I like that. Let's start calling them that. <laughs> yes, we have we have a elite program we're doing with the state, and there's different kinds of training on on mobility uses of iPads and, and software on the computer and stuff. That and it's led by a blind man. But you could tell us more about man. that than I could. And I was so fascinated. To watch them because they're doing things without eye vision that I don't know how to do. <laughs> and I'm watching it. And Lester and, and MJ, MJ is sitting right next to him. And of course, I know you're not allowed to touch a thing. That's their job. So you're not supposed to really bother. But Lester stands outside sometimes waiting a half an hour for the bus. And children are coming back and forth. Seniors are, acc are accidentally going into him. The dog does not move. Hmm. But Lester told me stories about how he saved his life, when, how a dog is so, this dog is so bright. And um, I can't wait to hear all those stories um, and I want to share with you. Before we begin, I want to thank all of my fellow friends and librarians for all of their help and support for these programs. Like I say, I'm very proud to be part of this staff because Melissa and the group, we, we we came through, all of us, everyone came to work and they weren't afraid and they, and <laughs> the, we, because we love South Orange and the community. And um, so, thank you. Um, and now, please let's give a very warm welcome to our very special guests, guests, okay. Lester and MJ. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, come on. Okay. No, he wants to sleep. So I'm just trying to stand at an angle here. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I'll move this down. Okay. Let me move it down. Okay, very good. Okay, why should you okay. be uncomfortable? You stay there. Okay. Uh, I went blind 10 years ago, and I figured at that time, my life was over. But I got a cane, a white cane. People call it a stick. They call it whatever they want. I thought I was cool, and I got around. Somebody says, why don't you get a dog? I said, yeah, what's a dog going to do for me? But I went to Seeing Eye in Morristown, and I spent 27 days there. MJ and I met. MJ is nine years old. I've had him for six years. He is a better friend to me than most people are because he would give his life for me, and he has come close to it. Uh, and I just, uh, I couldn't imagine, how am I going to work with this dog? And I said to my uh, instructor, wait a minute, how am I going to teach him to cross the street? My instructor laughed, he goes, you ain't teaching him nothing. He's going to teach you. <laughs> and they do go through a six-month to an eight-month intense course of learning how to cross the street, uh, look for curbs, look for stairs, and being the master, I have to teach him other little things that the school don't, don't teach you. But in the six years, he saved my life six times saved me from being mugged once at the Newark Library. Uh, he has, actually I put more faith in him to get me around than most sighted people. Because I'll tell him, show me the door. He'll take me to the door. I'll ask a, a sighted person, show me the door. <laughs> well, they really do. <laughs> and boom, you walk into a door. Go, Why didn't you tell me it was open? 
Well, did you know that? <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I did. But um, the difference is when a guide dog is a guide dog. He's to guide me to where I want to go. Now, they have service dogs. The two are altogether different. A guide dog is well trained and he goes through a lot of intense training. A service dog is a dog that will come to you and make you happy when you're sad. He'll pick up things, he's trained to pick up things when you drop it. He'll pull your wheelchair or stuff like this. He is not 100% obedient like this dog is. This is what he does ever since I got him. He lays there, he minds his own business. I've had people step on him. I've had children actually lay down and put their head on him. And he says, fine, I'm happy here. But with uh, a guide dog, I tell everybody, don't approach the dog. Approach the master. Or um, this way, most blind people, I'm, I'm sorry, get upset when you bother their dog. Oh, I want to pet your dog. Can I touch your dog? And you tell them, no, he's working. Well, he's not working. He's laying down. Well, he's on his coffee break. Leave him alone. You know? <laughs> people, I had a jacket he used to wear, like the guys the crossing guards would wear. Big signs, do not pet me, do not feed me, do not talk to me. People go, can I talk to your dog? Can I pet your dog? Well, I'm the blind guy here, you're the sighted guy, you should see the signs. But he has, when people go to touch him, and I taught him this, <coughs> He will take two steps backwards and look at him like, what did my master just say to you? you know? <laughs> and people go, what's the matter with your dog? He's skittish. I said, no. He's telling you. He, he stopped dead in his tracks, and he started sniffing me and crying like a baby, just whimpering. And my trainer said, grab his leash, grab his leash. He's going to take off because the dogs will just walk away. They don't do it. They, they don't do it on purpose, but they just walk. And I couldn't find his leash. And I said, MJ, where's your harness? The trainer says to me, he doesn't believe it. MJ actually bent over and put his harness in my hand. And we, from that day on, he would. If we were into a situation where we needed to get out of it, he would touch me on the belly once with his nose, and that would say, Dad, we've got a problem. What do you want me to do? And I would tell him, you, you know, you think about it, you tell me what you want to do. Then when we were clear with that problem, he would touch me on the belly twice to tell me, hey, Dad, everything's cool. We're, we're going. Um, when we're walking down the street, uh, there's a garbage can cover in the way. He used to stop and, and let me figure out what was going on. He got tired of that. <laughs> if there was a can, a garbage cover in the way, he actually pushes it out of his way with his nose. This is where our safety comes into. Is I taught him, when we're walking down the sidewalk and there's a car in the driveway and it's running, he will stop dead. I taught him this. Because I almost got run over by a person backing out of a driveway. And when I hear the car running, I yell out, walking behind you. Walk. And a woman got mad. She said, why are you screaming? I says, look, I'm blind. I got a dog. You're sitting in I saw you coming. I says, how do I know? And it's just different things like now. We'll walk down the sidewalk, and you know how bumpy sidewalks get. He stops. He puts his one paw up on the bump. Okay, thank you, and we go on. When it comes to a set of stairs, I taught him to show me which is up, which is down. I go to a set of stairs, I immediately 
he immediately pushes me to the right side of the staircase, either going up or down, doesn't matter. He puts his two front paws on the step, and his body is up this way, that means we're going upstairs. If it's down this way, we're going downstairs. Ever since I taught him that, I have never fell down a set of stairs, never tripped on a pair of stairs, but there's one thing, he will not go on an escalator. <laughs> He actually will lay down on his side and not move. Mm -hmm. And no matter how I do it, even if I shut the es because all escalators have an emergency shut off button at the bottom or the top, depending on which way they are. Uh, it's right under the right hand side of the rail. And you can shut it off, and that'll stop the escalator. He doesn't care. Dad, they ain't going on that. <laughs> because they're afraid to get their paws caught. That's the biggest thing. Um, it's a whole new world when, when you get a dog because he's your friend and he he takes care of you. There's, he looks out. I mean, I, I've had people call me a blind idiot because they're sitting there and they're blowing their horn like crazy. And they're yelling, I'm blowing my horn and waving at you. I says, I'm blind. Well, didn't you see me waving? I said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. You know, in my first life, I did. It's, um, I could make a whole routine out of what people do. They don't do it out of being mean. They don't do it out of being stupidity. They just do it because they don't think. And... I've had people come to me and go, you crossing the street? No. Oh, I'd like to take you to the other side. I said, I'm not going that way. <laughs> no, but I got to. I go, why? Because you think it's going to make you one step closer to heaven because you helped a blind guy? Nah. But they do it. They want to help you do something that you don't want to do. <laughs> I got a dog. Don't worry about it. My dog will do it. Well, your dog's laying down. Well, he'll be there. Don't worry about it. He's right now, let me get in a little bit to his illnesses. Two years ago, he uh, come down with colitis. And we almost lost him because his colitis was so bad. He dropped, he was, he was 83 pounds. He dropped 18 pounds. We finally got him regulated and he was doing good. Uh, last year, he, just like a human, when you have colitis and stuff, everything else affects you. And uh, last year he had another bad bout, and he lost weight again. He's now back up to 72 pounds. Uh, just recently he, he got into something he shouldn't have eaten, and that could have been anything. And with his tummy being so bad, it caused him to have colitis. And it's, I don't want to get into the part where it's very bad. He has non-control. Mm -hmm. And now he's on uh, thyroid medicine. He's on an antibiotic. He's on uh, pregazone. And uh, he's doing excellent. He's on a powder for uh, viruses, intestinal viruses. I can't think of the name of that. But he's pretty much back to normal uh, in his routine. And he's getting a little sluggish. Uh, he's got arthritis or bursitis in his uh, front right arm. And it, every so often it'll give out on him. But he's, he's ready for retirement. And it's, it's eating at me. I don't want to retire when I have to. Mister, I have a question. Fill us again. Okay. When you told me he, that you're bringing another dog in, my first thought is, he's so human, will he be jealous? I keep thinking about a new dog doing the things that he was doing, whether he's capable of it. Will he be aware of it? Have you ever seen or spoken to people who have brought in a second dog after they've been so attached, the dog is so attached to the master? Yes, there can be jealousy, but you have to work it out with them. Uh, what you do is in the beginning, 
to show the dog you still love him, you take them both side by side and work them. You take both dogs out and you walk them. You don't have to go far, but just showing your older dog that you still love him, you care for him, and you play with him as much as you play with the new one, and you try to share things that both dogs will share. And actually, it may sound silly, I'm, I'm, I'm not off my rocker, but people have told me that their two dogs have talked to each other <laughs> about how to treat my master. And dogs, dogs will talk with their eyes. That's why anytime you see a dog and he's staring at you, try to break his concentration. Because his eyes is what makes him do what he's going to do. And the dogs, that's what they do. They look at each other. All the dogs, the guide dogs, they do a meet and greet. It's, okay, get ready for this. It's a smell of hiney, kiss the nose, and look in his eyes. And that's it. And then they know, oh, wow, this guy's good. He gets fed well. He's well taken care of. Um, when I was at seeing eye, or even when I go to meetings where we have maybe seven or eight dogs underneath the table, you got to see this. They're all laying on top of each other. <laughs> one head's on another, and they're, you don't even hear them. Um, I go to a couple different diners. I've had people get up to leave, and people would say, that's a dog. I go, yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't hear him. We didn't see him. I says, then he did his job. He is not supposed to be heard or seen. And that's when you meet a person with a guide dog. The dog is invisible. Don't even look at him, talk to him or nothing. Uh, when we go to places a lot, like here at the library, when I first walked in the door, he wanted to take me right upstairs here because this is where we were doing the classes. Um, every year I go to a convention in the Manahawken. Uh, three years ago, we went there. I got room 215. Okay. Next year I go back, I got room 217. Well, guess what? MK don't like 217. <laughs> he stopped at 215. And I was amazed that all the places I go, if I go more than twice, he remembers them better than I do. Unbelievable. Uh, like when we're on Access Link, we're two, three blocks away from home. He gets up, I'm home, Dad, I'm home, I can have fun. Coming here to the library, uh, the lady, they made a mistake on the address. They said 55, it's 65. So she went there. And MJ just sitting there, he's, I says, we're not in the right parking lot, are we, MJ? And he just laid down. And she says, you know what, you're right. As soon as he, she pulled into here, he got up and he's crying and carrying on like, hey, we're at the library, Dad, we're, at, we're here. And this is what the dogs do. They're, I can't say high sprung, they're very motivated. They're very emotional. They're, they, they love their master. But he also loves my wife. Because if anybody, for a good example, when he's around, I cannot hug my wife. <laughs> <laughs> he comes in between us. Oh. And well, what are you guys doing? You know? Where does he sleep? He sleeps at the end of the, the foot of the bed in his bed. He has actually three beds. He has one in the living room, one in the dining room, and one in our bedroom, which I'll tell you what, a couple times I fell asleep on it. My <laughs> wife bought him a postopedic, arthritic, something mattress. And he loves it. <laughs> He's got a better mattress than I do. I just want she, to share with you. Pardon? We want to share with you, I had a lab chef. We got her at six weeks old. We had her for 16 years. We went to the medical supply store and bought that kind of mattress for her. Yes. And she also wouldn't let my husband get into bed. No. Yeah, hugging was one thing, but... <laughs> so I, I hear you loud and clear. The yeah, dedication that they have. 
Uh, I wanted to ask you, in our small town, we had someone who uh, was legally blind also, and he had uh, gone to the powers that be, and at every crossing, there, you would push the button, and then there would be a, so a sound that tells you yeah. that it's safe to cross. I notice here in South Orange, there's not, there are no crossings like that. There are the buttons to push, but um, your dog, of course, knows when to go, but it was also a help. This person did not have a dog. Yeah. See, the thing I may bring up about the, the uh, buttons, people in the neighborhood are ones that ruin it for the people that want to use it. Because I live in Kenilworth, and they put up eight of these. They were up for one month. Mm -hmm. They stopped them because the neighbors were complaining. Oh. It makes too much noise. Oh. Hey, too bad. We would have. Yeah. But if you ever get a chance to go to Morristown, you want to see crossing signs. <coughs> I got in trouble because, as you know, I, I like to joke around. And I was with uh, uh, four of us. There was two ladies and two guys. And we were crossing the street. But they got these signs when the light changes, it tells you. She says, okay, it's okay to walk, it's okay to walk, and then you walk. So one day I says, I gotta have some fun. And we're walking, we get, and I knew the street, so I knew there was no problem. Uh, when I got to the manhole cover in the middle of the street, I knew that we only had like 10 more feet to go and there the curb was at. So it's a sign saying, it's okay to walk. It's okay to walk. I go, I'm going to change. You better run. I'm going to change. You better run. <laughs> These girls started running. <laughs> My instructor, don't you ever do that again. Right. And I said, come on. It's a little bit of fun, you know. Then you also have to be taught when your dog goes out at night, because dogs can only see black and white. They cannot see color. They only see black and white. And things at night look different to them than during the day. That same bush that's at the edge of your driveway may be their friend during the day. But when he comes out at night, because of his vision, he looks at that and goes, uh-oh, that's a predator. i got to be careful. Mm -hmm. um, so what they do at Seeing Eye, they take you out at night. You've got to spend, not all at one time, four hours in the time that you're there, one hour a night, to go walking around. So uh, our instructor says, okay, we got two people left, Les and this other guy, or this other girl. I said, okay, fine. She says, we're going to go out for an hour, and she says, you'll see how your dog uh, acts. I go, we can't. She goes, why? I said, I can't go out in the dark. She goes, why? I said, I'm afraid of the dark. <laughs> she goes, oh my God, what are we going to do? I'll have to ask them. I says, the dark really scares me. She walks awake. She said, you're blind. How can the dark scare you? <laughs> but they, the girl that I was with, she says, we want him in our group. He's more fun. <laughs> nobody laughs. Nobody has a good time. When I was there, the trainer that trained MJ, was a big coffee drinker. MJ knew every stop to get coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and That's funny. Actually, MJ is a year older than what he should be. Um, he, sh he should be, he spent an extra year at uh, CNI because he's a lackadaisical dog. He's a good worker. He'll work to the hill. But he's lazy. He likes to swanter or walk slow. Yeah, Dad, we'll get there in 10 minutes. Don't worry about it. You're, are you in that big of a rush? But I'm that way, too. I'm a slow walker. I'm not going anywhere in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So a lot of blind people walk like you guys do because they were born blind, and they have that sense that they can feel things more than I can. So nobody really wanted him. So he waited for me, and I waited for him, 
And we met, and it's been a match ever since. And uh, one person said to me, Wes, I'll give you $10,000 for the dog. <laughs> I said, you don't have enough money on this earth for me to, to take it. Uh, because when you become bonded with them, that's it's... Uh, and I gotta tell you, the day that we rushed them to the doctors, and I'm not afraid to admit it, tears were flowing out of my eyes like there was no tomorrow. Because I thought my dog was, was dead. But this doctor in Kenilworth brought him back. He gave him special shots, he did everything, and here he is today. He's sleeping. <laughs> Can he get up? Wow. You know what? You yes. were absolutely so inspired. <laughs> and I said, I have to have him share this Aww. knowledge. I learned so much from you today, and I've had a, I have had dogs throughout my whole life, right. except for the last few years because we're not home, and it's not fair to a dog right. to leave a dog alone, yeah. you know. And we only have one dog at any time. Whereas, I have to add one more thing. You've got to know this. Yes. As a blind person, I clean up after my Aww. dog. Oh, wow. is, uh, you were taught in seeing eye how to clean up after your dog. And the crazy part about it, in my town, in Kenilworth, there's an ordinance. If you don't clean up after your dog, it's a $500 fine. Oh, but I'm blind and handicapped. I don't have to do that. <laughs> but guess what? I do it. Because I hate stepping into somebody else's droppings. And it just, people don't understand how a blind person can pick up a dropping uh, with a dog. And they teach you. And it's it's the simplest thing to do. And what else can I tell you? <laughs> Any questions? Any uh... Any questions? One Thank you. It was wonderful. Thank you. Your inspiration was how you handle what is a handicap. You made it as part of your life cool. and you don't complain right. and you make people laugh. I hate to correct you on that. I don't have a handicap. It's not a handicap. I have an inconvenience. Oh. It's not a handicap. Well, that's great to know. It's an inconvenience. Right. But I've overcome that. I mean, it's just yeah. blindness. There's life after blindness. And if you don't want to live it, then give it. What a wonderful, inspiring message to say. Thank you. 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 Th